Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. This is going to be part two of the uh, Zenith System 3 from 1978. Uh, thanks to a couple of helpful members who pointed out how to cross-reference the Zenith transistors with the 121 prefix and that the uh, substitute part for the horizontal driver transistor was an NT190. I went ahead and picked one up. Uh, not terribly cheap, but saves the time from trying to find another substitute. So, what we're going to do, I pulled the sweet board, as you can see, it's completely out. And we're going to go over the board a little bit more in depth, change the transistor, and get rid of the remaining glue. Uh, so let's get to it. So here's the sweet board. You can see the previous area where I scraped the glue, it needs more scraping. And then there's these capacitors that are also covered in glue, and there's a resistor buried between these two, which we've got to pull out and clean out. Uh, I'm really impressed at how large that flyback is. It seems to be really well made, although I guess it may have a built-in tripler. Just looking at the bottom side of the board, there's a couple of solders that look a little shady. Uh, somebody resoldered the work on the horizontal driver transformer but I think I'm going to redo these because these are notorious for breaking loose. Just a couple solders here which are a little lacking. Uh, a couple ones here for the horizontal output which don't look all that great. The soldering on the flyback is okay. It's a little crusty. But uh, I really think that we're, we should go over this a little bit more in depth and see if we can't clean the board up better. Uh, so let's do that. Alright, so we pulled some of these capacitors out and we cleaned all the garbage away that was all around these leads here. Uh, did a little more cleanup work, installed the NTE 190, we soldered a good chunk of the board, the flyback connections, anything that looked touchy. Uh, there was a connection here that looked like the foil trace was peeling up so I installed a jumper there just to be sure. Always want to cover all the bases. So now the, uh, the next thing to do is install it back in the set and see how it performs. So let's do that and let's fire it up. Back together, it's either going to fly or it's going to fry. Let's see which one it is. Got high voltage. It's going to be dry and then we'll begin to warm up by next week as well. Temperatures in the upper 60s for the inland valleys from 63. Cool. We're going to cool down much more by Saturday, 59 degrees. So Saturday is going to be pretty chilly. Get ready for that if you have plans, especially overnight. We may even have some patchy frost. Temperatures are going to dip down to the... Let's middle. see if we can touch up the focus a little bit. You can definitely hear that hissing in the corona. By the latter part of the weekend, dry and will begin to warm up as well for the deserts, 68, 69, and a little bit of rain also for the deserts, 61 by Saturday, Sunday with sunshine. Let's take a look at traffic. That's as good as it gets. But so far, no twitching. And, uh, here's a look at the H westbound at That's Ford good. Road. There's a crash on the left shoulder. The 805 North, no crashes, everything's clear now, but definitely some heavy uh, rain, uh, heavy traffic, rather. 46 minutes from 54 to Mary Mesa Boulevard. I don't like that the edges are so blurry, but that could be a convergence I thing. I was going to say rain, because I'm thinking of rain, but it's traffic, and yeah, tomorrow. All right. Thank All right. you. All right. All right, we'll get ready for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, today is family uh, business. Not Thursday bad. And Allie is checking out the Bernardo Winery in Rancho Bernardo. I wonder if we can touch up the convergence a little bit. Because it's kind of sucky. If you have Medicare and live in Southern California, this message is for you. Maybe I can play with my new toy. Let's go get that. Okay, so here's my cool little toy I got. This is a Heathkit IG5240. It's a handheld pattern generator. I picked this up from a TV shop that was closing here in San Diego, along with the original assembly manual. But you can see it's just got a big monolithic IC inside and you just set the uh, switches on the bottom to display what you want it to. So we're just going to turn it on here. And right now I've just got set to the basic crosshatch here. 
and there it is up on the screen and I gotta say other than the blurry edges this thing's got almost perfect convergence let me see if I can just dial in the focus a little bit better for you guys doesn't look like I can though it's pretty much as good as it gets CRT really is in good shape on this one you can see there's no pincushion error commonly on the Zenus you'll get an irregularity in pincushion towards the top here uh, let's go to color bars here and see if that works that pot's still a little dirty Uh, let's see, we we'll just drop it down to bars. There's our red, green, and blue. There we go, standard color bars. Pretty decent. I'm really liking this thing. There's been no twitches so far. It looks really good. Nice sharp picture. Uh, let's see. I think we're going to clean these pots a little bit because the pots are kind of dirty. And definitely mess with the sharpness and it shows up. But yeah, I mean, let's see. What else can we do here? There's our vertical stripe. More vertical stripes. I mean, you can really do a lot with this thing given the fact that it's handheld. It's pretty cool. And I like the rainbow pattern you get there too, so you can kind of check that out. Uh, but yeah, and then we've got our uh, cross crosshair there. I mean, this was just a really cool thing. It was well worth what I paid for it because I can literally just attach it to a set and go. Um, so yeah, this thing is like really just kind of ready to go that's great looking nice cross hatch pattern and everything so uh i'm gonna clean the pots on this thing and then maybe we'll see what of a pain it is to replace the little indicator lamp back here but i think i'm just going to clean the pots and switches and call it a day this thing's a really kick-ass performer uh, one more thing I want to do though before we button it up is see if I can decrease the width a little bit because we've got a lot of overscan. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the generator off. And then we'll uh, hook the TV back up to over the air and do a couple of adjustments. Okay, so I adjusted the width coil a little bit here and that short up the picture a little bit so it looks better uh, definitely want to clean the pots because that sharpness control is really touchy but otherwise it looks good and we'll see what it what it is to change the uh, light back there if it's even possible all right well here it is all buttoned back up I'm very happy with how this turned out the camera really doesn't show it too well, but it's got some just great flesh tones. Look at this golden sunset. Julie sent this in from Ocean. The CRT is sharp and bright. The guns equalize quickly. That's going to want to blanket a little bit, so I apologize for that, but it's uh, it looks really good. Especially if you've got like bright colors, cartoons, stuff like that. I mean, really, I'm more of a Chroma Color 2 guy. This is really my first System 3. Uh, that I've worked on that has a power transformer, so that's kind of cool. Let's see if I can lower the, the uh, contrast ratio a little bit so you see the colors a little better. Of course, it's going to freak out since I'm blocking the signal. 
Yeah. The camera makes it look kind of yellowed out. That just might be the auto white balance kind of thing. But it really does look awesome. That's excellent. So there you go. Uh, this is a really nice set. I have too many of these things though, so I'm debating whether I want to hold on to it or not. I've got a dying flat screen in the living room. I might replace it with this just because this really does look good. I mean, nothing's going to replace the resolution of a high def, but I don't really watch TV that much. In the time that I do, it's usually just newsy stuff. But man, what a great set. It's going to go blanky blanky. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video. Uh, I've got a another set I just picked up, an old Sears color, which I think is just a rebadged Sanyo that we'll get into in a little bit. But uh, yeah, this one's done. I like the way this one turned out. It's not twitching, it's well behaved. And with that power transformer and stable power supply, it'll probably last forever until the CRT wears out anyway. Thanks for watching the video. More stuff to come soon.